I mean, I was working on environment, environmental science. So when I was browsing through internet, I found that Professor Nagama and his many colleagues are working on, especially in the same field. And but later, so I searched through some books and all very old book. I still remember maybe published in 1974. He has one big article. So. I found many people over there, but after reading that article, I saw I I should go there only, nowhere else. So the first thing I got inter interested in NIBB is their infrastructure and their autonomy, because. We think that if it's a kind of autonomous institute, the research life is much more easier and competitive compared to the government-run institutes directly. Because here you can do whatever you want with much of, without much of complication, without not much of government interference. Regular university, if you do a PhD, so we think we cannot finish the work, work completely in one institute. So you have to run here and there, spending a lot of time for traveling only. And sometimes it happens like that. You have a precious sample, which is because we are biology people, so sample is very precious to us. Maybe if while traveling, it will get denatured, it will get degraded. So after you reach to the point where you will measure the sample, there will be nothing. The whole waste of everything. So, but in NIBB specifically, so we have everything inside. We don't need to go. Maybe you need to go from one lab to another lab. It's okay. And here in NIBB, we have a big common facility, which is awesome. Main focus is reproductive endocrinology. So. Basically, I'm working with Medaka as a model system. So Medaka is a common fish in Japan, and it's easy to handle for any experiment, biological experiment. So I'm doing generally gene manipulation and simultaneously environmental steroid study. So what is what are the impact of different pesticides, chemicals on environment using Medaka? So because Madaka is a kind of related to environment, as you know, fish always lives in the water. So water is first basic necessity for everybody. So if you can measure and control the things in the water environment, aquatic environment, it's pretty much easier to control the other places. Basically, RNAi is uh, the present method of Reverse genetic study. Reverse genetic study is a kind of study means you know this is what is this. Then for pointing why this, you have to go back. To going back, we need something. So for that, there are many methodologies like knockout, taking the swipe away with the gene from this, then you will understand why it happened. Then you will lose that phenotype, you will lose that character. So but for fish, unfortunately, we don't have any knockout system right now, like mammals and uh, like uh, mouse. So only the option is knock down, reduce the expression. So for reducing expression, there are many methods like morpholino, glipani, like antisense oligos, and presently RNAi is the most common, most burning around the world. So RNAi is uh, kind of used is used uh, in vitro, in vivo system. It integrates into the in vivo system. It makes in vivo system use and allows to knock down. So my research is because RNAi is a very commercial system. So we need to depend on the companies for getting the things done, everything, to the starting from design of RNA, uh, small RNAs and other things. So it, the cost becomes a little more higher. So if we want to study a really particular gene in detail, so we have to study many things. What, not only this gene knockdown, but related gene knockdown and study whether these are the pathway to find out the pathway of why it's happening. So for that, maybe the cost of that will be very high. 
So I thought maybe if we can develop something, something very low cost and very easy, who can everybody can do. Of course, we have to depend on the company. Sometimes it's it's not like that. But if we can make the system by ourselves and we can manipulate the system, so with a limited cost, we can give a better result. That will be good for our whole community. Japanese culture, I think. Uh, they are basically Buddhist, follower of Buddhism. So if you think traditionally, what I saw, they go for a prayer to the Buddhist monk or some monastery. But uh, generally, they became much more westernized. So the people like us from foreign countries, we don't feel any kind of complications to stay here because they don't have a particular traditional culture. Of course, they have some cultures like Men they are going for a party, which is called Sakura, just uh, welcoming the spring, going for a Boninkai party, year and cleaning. So this kind of party, group party, which is may not be so much compulsory, but they do it so dedicatedly and compulsorily means you feel that is their culture. It's quite good. Always enjoying drinking. Wow. I would like to say one thing that People who think that in Japan, the people, uh, may most of the foreigners think that maybe the Japanese people, they cannot handle the foreign people because of the language barrier. But uh, please make your mind clear that they are not like this. Even sometimes they cannot speak the common language that is English, but their body language is such expressive, you don't need to speak even, you can understand. So please come over for some time at least.